All stations confirm combat readiness. Strike wings intercept incoming javelins. Disable Semper Victoria's missile silo at first opportunity. Gamma in battle space. More stuff to shoot. Neutralized. The area is secure. Good work. Copy that. Zigger X, this is Artemis Control. Hostiles neutralized. Your approach is clear. Zigger X on station. Your assistance is appreciated, Artemis. Copy that. You got it. Something about an impending combined invasion. It's a huge raptor. Most of Fifth Fleet is there. It's the largest mustering of ships since the Great War. Shay, so it's big then? Like, all or nothing big? Not quite all or nothing, Razor. Fifth Fleet is still only one part of our total forces. The Combined Fleet is outnumbered and outgunned. Docking clamps secure. Preparing breaching charges. If the combat won't fight, we'll oblige the bastards. We'll give them another hammering like last time. Not sure what the hell they're thinking. Probably didn't learn from the last time we nuked Earth. That Argon of theirs is just power hungry. He's a megalomaniac. Or else he thinks he can defeat your fleet somehow. Don't just dismiss him as a madman. Great times over. Only one carrier on station. Must be their rapid response unit. Tally, have your jump. Guns hot. 
Tally. I have the jump. More fighters to deal with. Keep them off the cracks. More stuff to shoot. On my way. Someone get this piece of shite off my back. Good track. Thanks for merch.
In the late 22nd century, the revolution in space travel was accomplished. An alternative dimension of space-time, hyperspace was first postulated in wormhole theory. By tunneling between two points in three-dimensional space, a vessel could practically achieve faster than light travel without the deterministic complications of actual FTL travel. The first hyperspace drives were cumbersome devices employing vast amounts of energy to fold two points in space and establish a hyperspace tunnel between them. The second revolution came about through the detection of highways connecting various points in real space. Not only was the energy requirement far lower to enter and exit hyperspace at these points, travel time was significantly shorter than by the previous method of hyperspace travel. With the discovery of these hyperspace lanes, Terran colonization of the Orion arm accelerated at an exponential level. Whilst it is universally accepted that the presence of these lanes has been a boon to our species, the origin of these lanes remains a mystery. Are these lanes the natural byproduct of the hyperspace phenomenon, or were they artificially constructed by technology far in advance of ours? The Miranda Accord of 2236 was signed into effect amongst the ashes of the Great War. The war was remarkable in the excesses of the tactics and weapons used, hearkening back to the unrestrained industrial warfare of centuries ago. Unrestricted nuclear orbital bombardment had left several planets ecologically devastated, including Earth. By the time of ceasefire, billions of souls had perished. Humanity would not survive another such war. The conference attended by representatives of every sovereign star nation set into motion a solemn, binding vow, never again will such destruction visit humanity's homes among the stars. In addition to finalizing the terms of armistice, a major tenet of the treaty was drafted to prevent a repeat of this tragedy by restricting the storage and deployment of space-borne nuclear weapons to capital ships. Further treaty restrictions to nuclear proliferation limited capital ships to the three recognized great powers, the Atlantean Federation, Cenarus Combine and Alban Commonwealth. If any nation violated these restrictions, an automatic declaration of war by the three great powers would be enacted to enforce the treaty. Liberty. Independence. Justice. The Atlantean Federation is a great power. The Federation came into being as a military alliance of nation-states to provide mutual defense against the authoritarian combine. Mindful of the threat of monolithic sole government represented, member states of the Atlantean Federation swiftly passed a constitution guaranteeing the political freedoms and autonomy of its systems. For mosaic of varying cultures and political beliefs, the Federation covers a vast territory that includes several resource-rich systems. These critical resources help support the massive wartime armament investment during the Great War. Though the war involved most major powers in the galaxy, Federation ships made up the bulk of anti-combine forces, and it was Federation warheads which devastated Earth from orbit. The fledgling alliance came out of the conflict with significant territorial and economic gains, overtaking every other rival to become the preeminent power in Terran space. The Federation has the largest military by tonnage of the Terran powers. The significant military-industrial complex powers the Federation economy. One people. One future. The Cenarius Combine is a Terran great power. The Cenarius Combine rose from the ashes of the Sol Combine, the powerful administrative hub of Terran space. Economic and ecological collapse at the end of the Great War led to the replacement of Sol's government with a new capital in the Cenarius system. For the first time in human history, Earth had lost her place at the zenith of Terran administration and culture. The following years were dark times for combined citizens. The Cenarius government inherited a small but densely populated territory dependent on imports from outlying systems, systems now under Federation control. The loss of Earth's infrastructure and much of her population had also shattered the once proud nation. The pragmatic but totalitarian ruling government took drastic action, entire swathes of the population were mobilized into rebuilding the economy. Power was concentrated at the upper echelons of the single-party government which severely curtailed political and social freedoms for its citizens. The nation's citizenry committed itself to this gargantuan task, firm in the belief that this was a necessary sacrifice to ensure the future for generations to come. As a result, combined leadership expects absolute loyalty to the state, including compulsory military service and working in a chosen area of a socially useful occupation. In return, combined citizens have the right to comprehensive state welfare, 
housing and education. As the economy recovered, the Sineru's combined start fleet benefited from an extensive modernization program. Heavily armed warships are designed with less specialized roles than Federation equivalents with an emphasis on flexibility of movement and independent operations. For Crown and Country The Alban Commonwealth is one of the great powers. Fortune and foresight secured Commonwealth power. The capital system of Alba is the nexus of a densely populated hyperspace network, with extensive trading lanes established rapidly after the system was colonized. The Commonwealth's economy almost exclusively relies on trade, with Alban corporations maintaining some of the largest merchant navies in the galaxy. During the final stages of the Great War, the Commonwealth took advantage of a unique opportunity to offer its services at mediation. In a diplomatic triumph, the Commonwealth arbitrated terms that satisfied both the Federation's territorial demands and the Combine's need to save face to its citizens. In 2236, the Alban Commonwealth chaired a conference attended by representatives from every independent star nation to draft the Miranda Accord. The prestige secured the recognition of the Commonwealth as a great power. Though not the military or industrial equal of the Federation or Combine, the Commonwealth still commands substantial economic and cultural power. The Commonwealth is a constitutional monarchy ruled by the youthful Edward Winson, the perspicacious and well-loved Salpurin. Rumors circulate regarding House Winson's ability to read and influence people, a trait shared by each generation of Winson monarchs. This ability has taken on an almost mystical status from various embarrassments over time. Commonwealth military strength flight in research and development, personnel training and naval intelligence. His Majesty's Navy is the smallest of the three great powers but emphasis on these strengths goes some way to offset the disadvantage in tonnage, 